It's cataractcoach.com. And look carefully. This is not just a posterior subcapsular cataract. This is a posterior polar. Do you see the round outline of the dense polar opacity? And I got a little surprised here because this patient was booked, and I recall seeing a posterior subcapsular cataract, but here with that red reflex, I really see the posterior polar nature of it. And sure enough, when we look at the chart, this patient has been noted to have a posterior polar opacity for many decades. This patient's now 67 years old and is having cataract surgery, but certainly has had this posterior polar cataract essentially her entire life. The opacity has become worse, and obviously we're at the point now where we need to do cataract surgery in order to improve her vision. You know, what's the catch with the posterior polar? The catch is, in a lot of these patients, that posterior capsule is weak, fragile, or even frankly absent. And the largest studies, published by Bobby Osher and Abe Vasavada, about one in three patients who have a posterior polar cataract can have an issue with posterior capsule rupture during cataract surgery. That's high, one in three. So we have to do things differently. We're making a nice, very consistent capsulorexis here because you know there's a higher chance that they're going to have to put in a sulcus lens or some other form of uh, lens fixation, such as optic capture. If the capsule breaks, we cannot put the lens in the capsule bag. Now, avoiding hydro dissection, we don't want any hydro dissection, just hydro delineation. See, the problem is if you do hydro dissection and that fluid wave, as it goes between the posterior capsule and that polar opacity, it can rip the posterior capsule open. So you definitely have to avoid that. So no hydro dissection. I'm trying to do just a little hydro delineation. Um, tr there's a little bit of a plane I've tried to find. And, you know, what we can do is let's just get out this dense central endonucleus first. And we're going to do that with a chop technique. So we'll get the phaco probe. I'm going to put it inside the eye. And we'll chop this nucleus. So phaco probe going in, and we're going to buzz in, dig in the chopper. We'll get a nice separation. Now be careful separating the halves. Just do a little bit. That should be enough. And let's fast forward. We've had many posterior polar cataract cases here on cataractcoach.com. You should definitely review those. We've had three or four already. And in this one, you know from the posterior polar cataracts that we have to be very careful not to touch the posterior capsule. So here's, we're taking out the remaining epinuclear shell. There's a little bit of cortex that's left. The key here is you absolutely cannot touch the poster capsule. If you try to remove that central plaque off the poster capsule, it can, in a second, pop the poster capsule wide open. So instead, let's remove this epinuclear shell and the other fragments we can. And I'd rather place the lens in the capsule bag and then have the patient get a YAG capsulotomy a month or two later. That's a much better option for me. We'll try to clean up as much of this lens material as we can around the capsular rim. And again, we're not going for perfection here. This is a very important case to avoid seeking perfection. You want a good result. You want the patient to have a nice outcome. And we don't mind doing a YAG laser capsulotomy later. So let's clean up as much as we can. And again, we're not going to touch that central opacity. Now here, don't come out of the eye just yet. We do not want the anterior chamber to collapse. If you come out of the eye and let the AC collapse and let the posterior capsule come forwards, it can break. So now, keeping the foot pedal in position one with the eye probe, put in viscoelastic. I'm filling the bag with viscoelastic using my left hand. That's our cohesive viscoelastic. Now I can pull the probe out. And that prevents any movement of the poster capsule. We prevent anterior chamber collapse. And that's a big, big, important point here. So now it looks pretty good. We're going to open up our single piece acrylic lens. Now, what are the lens options? You could put a single piece acrylic lens in the bag, which is what we're going to do here. You can put a three-piece lens in. A three-piece lens is nice because you have options. If you're inserting the lens and the poster capsule breaks when you insert it, 
Well, you can put the three-piece lens in the sulcus or opt to capture it or something else. If, however, you're putting in a single piece acrylic like we're doing, if you break the capsule, you have to take the lens out. So I'll put this lens in, and notice I don't aim it towards the poster capsule. I want it to go just under that nasal anterior capsule rim. Now using the chopper, we'll get it in an appropriate position. Again, don't want to touch the poster capsule. Gently rotate this around. There's a nice wad of viscoelastic between the optic and the poster capsule, and that looks great. You are wondering, what about that big central opacity? Isn't the patient going to have, you know, impaired vision tomorrow? Yes, in fact, they will. Here's the hydration. Now, I'm hi why am I hydrating the phaco incision now while there's still viscoelastic in the eye? And the answer is so that after I move the viscoelastic and come out of the eye, the AC will not collapse. Yes, this patient's going to have that central opacity in the vision. It'll be somewhat impaired tomorrow on post-op day one. But that's not a big deal. This patient's lived with a terrible cataract for a long time and lived with posterior polar opacities for her entire life. So waiting a month or two for things to stabilize before doing a YAG laser capsulotomy is just not a big deal. So now we'll come out of the eye and seal up the incisions, and this patient's going to have a beautiful outcome. So we see the overlap of the optic with the capsorexis. Again, we remove the viscoelastic from behind the optic, but we're very careful. We don't want to touch the posterior capsule at all. And again, we hydrated the incision prior to removing the scholastic because I don't want the AC to collapse. So we come out of the eye. Look, the AC stays formed. Now we'll just use some balance salt solution to hydrate the incision. Thanks for watching.